Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we have a toolkit and it's called the RC Toolkit M8. Now this thing is pretty damn unique and it does everything. It's like the Swiss army knife of battery chargers. And you might say, well, what the hell does that mean? Well, let me explain. What can this do? This can read PWM, it can read SBUS, it can read PPM if everything's working. It can even send SBUS and send PPM and send PWM and even act as a power supply and also test your ESC with the motor. So first of all, it's main feature, I think. I don't know what is main feature, but it's a charger that charges up to 8S at 15 amps. So one to 8S, that's pretty good because some of my $200, $300 chargers don't even charge up to an 8S and they just charge 6S. So out of the box, that's pretty amazing. Now also what we have is we can set profiles here which is really good and it charges most of everything we need. We have LiPo, Lithium High Volt, uh, Life and Nickel Metal Hydride and Lead Acid batteries and you can tweak the settings as you please. And as you can tell, we can also discharge up to a maximum of three amps. So this is the charging part, pretty basic. Every single charger has this. Now again, it's a single charger with balancing with a balance port here. Now, this is where it gets interesting. These two modes are really nice. Let me show you. So we have measure. Now what measure will do, if we take a look on this side, we have two inputs. We have a USB input, which is five volt, two amps, not QC charging. So, but it hits two amps, I've tested that. So that's really nice in that perspective. Here we have a little port, which you could stick a servo type connector, which is a signal, uh, ground positive and signal. This would be a five volt output, so be careful. All right, so what you do is with the current measure setting is you can measure your current PWM input that's coming in here. So you can see if something is wrong with that signal that's coming out because you don't know why your servo is not turning. So you can go ahead and for example, if you had a servo connected to a flight controller and the servo is not working, you can take the wires from the flight controller that we're going to the server, stick them in here and measure if it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing or that pin is damaged. So that's one little tiny feature. And you can do this also for PPM. So if you had some sort of a PPM receiver or something, you can stick it in here and watch the channels actually change right and left. And you can know your channel mapping if you're having an issue. You don't know that the throttle was on channel three for some reason. So you can fix that up and then you're good to go. That's also really nice. And you can also connect the S bus and see what the hell's going on with your channels here. You have channel one, two, three, four, and it goes down. It goes down to channel 16. And we also got some more uh, info here. Frames lost, fail safes, and bytes. DG1, DG2, I have no idea what those mean, but it doesn't really matter right now. Uh, battery. So for battery, we can check its voltage as well as its internal resistance once it's connected on the side. So that's also a huge feature here. ESC, this is pretty interesting. You can control an ESC in a motor. So for example, you had a motor that's not working or an ESC you think is not working. You can give it power from here give the signal from here to the ESC and click on this part ESC and you can set the throttle to whatever you want. First, I highly recommend you set it to 100 before anything and that way so you can do the calibration sequence and then you can drop it down to zero. But I don't know how reliable that would be because it takes kind of a long time here. So what you can do is set like 15% throttle and then you can do start and then you'll know if there's an issue with the uh, uh, motor or ESC. So that's something really nice. And don't forget, don't exceed 15 amps because this is just rated for 15 amps. So yeah, so it'll take the power from here and give to the ESC from here other than charging. So I think we're done here. Yeah, we're done with the measure part currently. What else do we have? We have output. Output is almost the same thing. PWM, you can output PWM. So this will also act as a servo tester. So you wanted to find the center spot of your servo. You would go ahead and connect it here and actually let me go grab a servo. So for example, I just have the servo and I need to find its center point because I have no idea uh, where its center is so I can install it on my FPV wing, for example. So as you can tell, here's a servo type connector. We have ground positive signal. So that looks right. That looks right. Just like that oh, scared the shit out of me. <laughs> So yeah, that's working. So we have manual mode. This is the exact center currently. So I'm just gonna fix that like so. There we go. And if we go to the width of the PWM signal, we can actually change. So this is 50% kind of like in an ESC. And I just wanna figure out, yeah, it moved. As you can tell, I'm just going over. There we go. Now there's also something pretty nice. You can also do this auto mode here. Can you see that? That's really nice. Auto two. 
auto three. That is really nice. That is just absolutely awesome, actually. So I really like this. So that's one thing we can do. Now we might as well just unplug it. You can also output PPM and all the channels and you can modify. So if you had a, you know, you stuck it into your quadcopter to see what channel two is doing and you wanted to control channel two. So this is outputting PPM. You go to channel two and then you can just raise it. This is like you're putting throttle in, in you know, on your receiver, which is really nice. So that's something you can do. Same thing with S bus. You control all 16 channels. You can modify any of them as you please, and you also get this information. Uh, so you can even enable all oh, fail safe. So this is really nice, actually. Uh, so we can actually simulate a fail safe here. Wow, that is awesome. Uh, into the flight controller. So you'd give the flight controller. Uh, what you want to do is you don't want to give it five volts. You would want to give it ground and the signal. So take yeah, take that into consideration. A servo, that's fine. That's what it takes. But you want to give the ground and the signal to your flight controller. And you can go ahead and play with these and see what happens on beta flight. Power, uh, this is pretty interesting. This actually also acts as a power supply. Now, why is this so interesting? What's so cool about this? Well, I have a $120 power supply and that thing doesn't go above five amps, uh, 30 volts, five amps. Now this thing can go up to 15 amps and it's selectable between one volt and 30 volts. Uh, I think the maximum is 8.9 volts, but that's still way higher than uh, my $120 power supply. So you can set up whatever you want here. You know, I want to just to say, test this flight controller because it's not booting off of USB and it takes five volts. So I'm just going to give it five volts and I'll set the amperage here. This is a limiter, so we can limit the amps to one amp and click start. Oops, sorry about that. Oh yeah, and I'm going to get into the custom uh, the settings up here also. So now you can give 5 volts up to 1 amp, or it says 12 volts, sorry, because I switched through the menus. But yeah, you can access the power through here now. You can give whatever you want power. Now what's really nice, if you go to the typical here, now it's not, um, it's not very useful for me, but for others it might be. Mavic 2, it'll give you exactly what it needs as power, uh, maybe because you wanted to boot it up. Mavic S, Phantom S, Inspire. This is pretty good. This is really awesome. So we also have through and I think through what it means is it just gives whatever the voltage is in here and it limits it to that side. When you when it's giving out through here, it, it'll do some kind of limiting. But custom just gives you basically a power supply from five volts to 30 volts, actually from one volt to 30 volts. So that is just a really nice feature. And this is basically the Swiss Army knife of RC stuff. This has everything. To test a lot of things this you don't even need an oscilloscope to make sure anything is running like any of your uh, receivers actually sending any signal or anything so that is uh it's really cool it's really nice and you here you have a bunch of other settings uh what you can do is it doesn't come like this it comes like this actually and i figured that out by mistake so you can even invert the picture if you wanted to you have backlight buzzer buzzer you get up to seven levels i turned it off before starting the review because it would have been very noisy as you can tell pitch gets higher and it gets louder so I just have that off idle if it's not doing anything not charging it'll start beeping after five minutes pretty self-explanatory stuff here and well that's it guys it's a really nice product definitely recommended for testing and debugging and even charging 15 amps 8s amazing uh, even the power supply function this is the smallest power power supply on the freaking planet that's capable of, of all of these things it's quite remarkable you know how small this thing is? Let me show you a comparison real quick. So here's a, what is this, uh, R9M module here. It's almost just like as big as an R9M module. Even it's a little bit fatter in some areas. There we go. It, it's small. It's really small. This will fit in any backpack or anything. So yeah, overall, it's a really nice piece of hardware. I definitely recommend it. I like it. Um, it's very useful. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please check the links down below to get more information about this product. And if you do click the links, they do support the channel. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.